They are certainly not sparkling now. Look at these things. This uh, villain of the deep has been eating topi or zebra all day long. And look, he's got remnants on his sharp teeth. He's just opened his mouth now. That's his gular flap there. And what is very interesting, of course, is that that flap closes over the throat when the crocodile bites something underwater so that it doesn't drown, which I think is rather clever. Isn't that astonishing? Let's see if we can't... Let's go to his eye. He's only just opened his mouth. Let's try and go to his eyeball there. There you go. You Membrane moving there. Well, he's this chap's now fallen asleep. I don't blame him. He's full of food. You can see the remnants of topi and zebra on his uh, top palate. But let's just wait for him to open his eye because it really is quite cool. I'd love to sort of clap and make a noise to make him open his eye, but that's obviously not possible from where we are. There's the membrane. You see that nictitating membrane? Now, interestingly, it was pointed out to me, almost certainly by Judy H, that elephants have a similar kind of a membrane that you can watch going across their eyes, just wiping the lens. I wish I'd had one of those today. I was attacked by the bungee cord. Anyway, there are the eyes. And let's go along the teeth. Look at that. Rachel, you say they are truly frightening. I cannot agree with you more. Now... Yesterday I got a comment on Twitter, which was very valid, um, especially if I wasn't clear enough. I've been referring to these chaps as the villains of the bush and that, you know, nobody roots for them because they're so villainous looking. Um, I must just reiterate, as I did say to the... ...say that nobody really likes them. All I mean, of course is that in a story or tongue-in-cheek way, they are the villains. Look at his wonderful skin. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> the tail folded. I'm being attacked by a fly. I might have to, you might hear some frantic clapping noises shortly. That is just amazing. We'll go back up his back now, I think because it's just too special to do it like this. Hmm. Uh, Bobby, you say the notch that would close. Let me just have a look. I'm, you're talking about a notch in the upper jaw. Let's go again there. Go again with that, Louise. You mean that thing there where he's losing a tooth? Right. Yes, now he's lost a tooth there, and you can see a new one coming through. And if you're a crocodile, in fact, he's lost three teeth, I think. If you're a crocodile, if you lose a tooth, it is replaced immediately by another one. Um, and I think you're also wanting to know, is does that sort of notch above the lost tooth uh, have a sort of slot? Yes, it does. Or does that tooth underneath it slot into it? And I think you're absolutely right. I think, I wish I could point. I wish I had some kind of method of pointing, but I can't. There, the biggest tooth there, or the highest pointing tooth there on the bottom jaw, I think does slot into that notch there. Bobby, I think you're absolutely right. And the one next to it slots into the notch above. That's very well observed. I didn't see that. And then as Louise is pointing out to me now, there are notches clearly visible on the bottom jaw where the top teeth obviously slot in. Let me get down a bit there. There you can see them. Bottom right-hand side of your screen. Isn't that cool? There's a bit of a ooh, topi or wildebeest uh, plasma or what's the word I always forget to use? Uh, uh, viscera. <laughs> viscera. Anyway, this is one of pretty big crocodile. He's not the biggest I've seen. I'd say he's probably in the region of, oh, I don't know, 800 kilograms, maybe. He's pretty big. I'll show you where he's sitting, where the water is. And let's, I wonder if we won't see, perhaps, 
something else thinking about crossing. Now, the fact that those vehicles are there is in interesting. Vehicles, a little bit like animals here in the Masai Mara mass, when they think there's going to be action. On some gathering animals. No, don't seem to be any there. Now, Clara, you're just 10 years old, and you say, are there any birds that will us teeth? There are birds around the place. I've heard of doing it. I thought cattle egrets did it, but I'm not so sure that they do actually anymore. I've not actually seen it, as far as I'm aware. And Brent made mention of a species of bird, which I've forgotten now, that he said was a major cleaner of crocodile teeth. But yes, they do occur, Clara, but I haven't seen any in this area. Uh, Luke, can we go to Main Crossing South, please? That's the camera just down the way. And we'll be able to see a little bit more. So this is just down the river from where we've been. And that's a main crossing point there. That you can see where the crocodiles are lurking. That's where we had the big zebra crossings today. And you can see the massing vehicles there in the, or the two vehicles. And that's two of them that we were saw earlier, they're the same ones, just from a different angle. All right, well, we're going to wait and see what happens at these crossings. While we do that, I believe Tristan is still desperately searching to quench his thirst. <laughs> 